The Witcher 3 cannot get high. Macs aren't exactly known for their gaming prowess, and especially with the release of Apple Silicon, it's made it harder for you to be able to play video games because it's running on an ARM architecture now, which is not the same as most of your gaming PCs that are out there. And to make matters worse, Apple's done things like remove 32-bit support so that you can't actually play older games, such as things like Portal or plenty of other well-known games that came out well before 64-bit was introduced to the seed. So what I want to check out today is to see how well the new M1 Pro MacBook Pros are able to do at gaming, especially with the upgraded GPU. This is the 16 core GPU version. I don't have the M1 Max 32 core GPU version, but we might get a pretty good sense of what you can potentially do on Mac OS at this moment. And that's kind of the crux of the video. I don't want to install any other operating system. We're not running parallels here to see what we can get on Windows 11. But if you're interested in that, why don't you hit the like button and leave a comment down below to let me know that you're interested in me checking out this a little bit further. So today we're going to be taking a look at what you can natively play on these MacBooks and then also what you could potentially do with some inbuilt emulation using Wine using a program called CrossCode that allows you to actually play games on the M1 while not actually having to do anything else besides install a program. And we're going to do that after I talk about today's video sponsor which helps me to afford things like buying a whole brand new MacBook to check out gaming stuff. Today's UFD Tech video is brought to you by Manscaped.com. And if you've watched this channel for any length of time, you know that I'm a huge fan of Manscaped and their all-in-one men's grooming kit that makes manscaping safe and easy. And it's even so safe and easy that you can use their lawnmower 4.0 to shave off your eyebrows on the side of a road at a Tesla supercharger, but I don't think they want me talking about that in their sponsor spot. But regardless, it, you can do it. And as the leader in men's hygiene, Manscaped knows that the best grooming experience starts in one place, the shower. Manscaped created their perfect three-step men's grooming regimen to level up your shower game, covering the big three odor zones of your body, your butt, your balls, and your body, okay? All of them, they make you rank. And that's why we're introducing their newest shower formulations by Manscaped. The Manscaped body wash with refined cologne scent and the two-in-one shampoo and conditioner and the lawnmower 4.0 waterproof electric body trimmer. My friends, when you jump in the shower, where do you start? Your head, your body, your pits, your butt, what, where, okay? Well, it doesn't matter because Manscaped has the right formulation to help you groom from head to toe, literally. Listen, my friends, try this. Start with your head hair and use the Manscaped two in one shampoo and conditioner solution, all right? And it'll cleanse and nourish with their ultra premium lather. It's infused with coconut water, green tea, aloe, turmeric, and sage. It's a non-greasy daily conditioning formula, which is naturally hydrating and rich in antioxidants to revitalize the look and feel of your hair. Not so much mine, because the, there's not much looking and feeling going on right now. It's got the perfect balance of cleansing and moisturizing. It'll keep your hair healthy and hydrated while still giving you that subtle mask scent that Manscaped is known for. And then once your head hair is rinsed, you probably want to move your way down on your body. No, I'm not going to do that anymore. This is when you'll need your Manscaped body wash. The new body wash by Manscaped is a premium daily shower gel scented with Manscaped's refined cologne and features a luxurious lather for any skin type. It's infused with aloe vera and sea salt, so it gives the perfect balance of tough cleaning and soothing hydration. All of Manscaped shower products are paraben-free, cruelty-free, and vegan, so you're never washed in with harmful chemicals or dyes. And now that you've cleansed yourself from all germs, bacteria, excess oils, your skin is now hydrated and primed for a comfortable shave, which is where their Lawnmower 4.0 waterproof cordless trimmer is designed specifically for trimming the most sensitive areas, especially, you know, once you're done in the shower, you can, you can start trimming away. It has the ceramic blades with skin technology which helps to reduce the risks of nicks and cuts when saving your nether regions. And when you follow this simple three-step regimen, you're always moving loose hairs and bacteria in a downward direction. This helps to make sure you walk out of the shower feeling squeaky clean every single freaking time. So be sure to opt in to Manscaped's peak hygiene plan so you can make sure you never run out of your favorite Manscaped products. Pick a replenishment cycle that works for you and your products get delivered straight to your door hassle-free. Big thanks again to Manscaped for stepping up my shower game. You go to Manscaped com and use promo code UFD for 20% off your order plus free shipping. Again, go to manscaped.com, use promo code UFD for 20% off your order. Big thanks again to them sponsoring today's episode. So natively supported on M1 Max are a few different applications. You do have Steam support, which does show you the games on Steam that you can play if you have Apple Silicon by clicking this button right here. This is obviously just my Steam library, but there's plenty of titles that you could potentially enjoy like City Skylines, Counter-Strike, Dota 2, and one of my favorite is Hades. We're gonna get into how these games perform in a second, but I have a couple installed here on the native macOS version of Steam. But then there are also native macOS versions 
versions of things like the Epic Games Launcher, which also does things pretty decently by showing you whether or not your library is actually supported on macOS. So I have several major games here that are actually pretty popular, Borderlands 3, Metro Exodus, and Fortnite, but the rest of the games that I have in my Epic Games library are not supported by this operating system. And additionally, Battle.net also has a client where you can install things such as World of Warcraft, Hearthstone, not COD Warzone, WoW Classic will work, but Overwatch will not, Diablo 3 will work, Starcraft 2 will work, Heroes of the Storm will work. Most of these are pretty lightweight games that are decently easy to run. But as I mentioned, there's other ways to install games on your M1 Mac, and that's using a program called Crossover, I think I might have said CrossCode earlier, which essentially uses Wine to emulate a Windows environment on your Mac, and thereby you can try to play some of the games. Now I have gone ahead and installed a whole bunch of games using a Windows version of Steam, which you can see right here. Portal is one of the biggest ones because it's a 32-bit game that can't natively get installed on the new Apple processors. But this is essentially just a giant experiment to see what games can I play and how well do they run. So let's go ahead and start off with the native Steam version that's on Mac OS. Now, one of the things to note is that as far as I'm aware, there are very few applications that allow you to check frame rate on Mac devices. Steam has its inbuilt FPS counter, but there's not really anything like MSI Afterburner or Fraps that's been made for Mac OS that is still under development. There is a program known as Count It, but that's gone out of development and it's not necessarily working on every game that I've been able to try it on. So here we have Hades that's running at the full resolution on the game, at least in the menu, it seems to be indicating that's running 120 frames per second. So you can take full advantage of the display. But once we actually get into the game, you can see we're more limited to about 60 frames per second. And it's probably gonna get a little bit worse once there's particle effects going on. But that's honestly not too bad. Hi there, editing Brett here. I realize now during editing that the capture card I used to capture all of the max gameplay compressed the footage to crap and back. And so everything looks really fuzzy, but I can assure you that it looks minty and crisp on the MacBook itself. And I really need to figure out my capture card settings before recording in the future. But since this video took me over an hour and a half to record, I'm not able to resolve all of that footage. If we knock down the resolution to 1920 by 1000, then we bring the FPS to around 100. But you do get this weird display scaling issue that's going on right here. So 100 FPS in Hades, which I would consider was my game of the year for 2020. It's very easy to run. They have ported it to the Nintendo Switch. So that's not necessarily anything to write home about. So let's go ahead and take a look at Shadow of the Tomb Raider instead see how it performs at 1920 by 1200 on high settings. So about 40 to 45-ish FPS as we enter this benchmark is not too bad. There are few frame rate hiccups. This is honestly not all that terrible. I think if I drop down the medium, we might be able to hit that 60 FPS mark. So there you have it. Our average FPS was 48, which is not terrible at 1200p high for not even Apple's top of the line GPU. Now, mostly my praise for this comes from the fact that the M1 is still a pretty nascent processor. It doesn't have a whole lot of development going on behind the scenes that allows it to actually become a really good gaming powerhouse. One of the things that I think might be coming down the pipeline, I could potentially be wrong about this, but because of Valve's effort to port all of their games over to Linux for their upcoming console, the Steam Deck, we might actually be seeing a lot more support for versions of games that could come out to Mac OS as well because of the porting efforts that are being done for the Steam Deck. Whether that means you can use Wine and use a Linux wrapper to actually make everything playable, or it might mean that you can have native support on Mac OS a little bit better, especially with ARM processors. It's a little up in the air where this could potentially go, but I'm excited as to where gaming on all platforms is going. Now let's go ahead and check out the Epic Games games. That's terrible. That's a terrible naming scheme. Okay, as we're running Borderlands 3, it looks like we're averaging between 40 and 50 FPS. Not too bad. 1200p low. It's not terrible. So the final average was 49.12. Now we got Metro Exodus up 1200p again. Medium quality settings. Again, there's no way for me to track the FPS here. We're just going to go ahead and try to see whether or not it's playable. Honestly, this looks pretty good. Um, And like a stable frame rate. This doesn't look like it's exactly uh, 60, but it also doesn't look like it's 30. So we might be hovering in that 40 to 50 region yet again. 
Uh, but the quality is looking pretty good on this display. I'm enjoying what I'm seeing so far. Yeah, this is definitely not 60, but it is not 30 as well. I don't feel like I'm dipping under 30 in any part here. All right, it's Fortnite's turn. We've got everything at 1200p high settings, 100% 3D resolution. We have show FPS on, so I should be able to see exactly how it's performing. Okay, now that we're on the ground, we're looking at about 100 FPS. This is 100% playable besides the fact that I'm on a trackpad and trying to make everything work that way. If I was into Fortnite and had to play it, I would definitely be okay with doing this on my M1 Pro. So that was it for all the native Mac games that I wanted to test out. Now let's try to see what we can get with games that aren't officially supported on Mac, which is using this crossover application. It's actually a fairly easy piece of software to use. You just click on install a Windows application, and if you have one that you want to do, such as Steam, that'll pop un under here, and it'll let you know whether or not it runs well or if it might have some problems. So one of the games that I actually did want to play, but I've already kind of tested out, was Red Dead Redemption 2. However, because Rockstar Games Launcher will not install, I'm not able to actually get RDR2 to actually play on this MacBook. So let's start with a new game that just came out, Back for Blood, which is obviously the spiritual successor to Left for Dead 2, and we can see whether or not this will load. You can see it's trying to load the easy anti-cheat right there whether or not we get into the game i've noticed it's been a little bit of a crapshoot but there we have it we're in back for blood which is not officially supported on mac os fatal error oh that is not good i will try it one more time to see what exactly happens it won't even load the second time Okay, let's move on to another game, Doom Eternal. Vendor not recognized, GPU driver error. Yep, that's not gonna play. Final Fantasy 15, Windows Edition. Will it run on Mac OS? We've got full screen at least. We've got a frame rate counter in the upper left. One frame per second, 10 frames per second. I'll take it. Okay, I've been sitting here for about 10 minutes and this game is just, it's not loading. That's, it's not happening. You know what, Portal. That's, I wanna try that one out because it's a 32-bit game. If this works, that's gonna be a pretty decent achievement of crossover, allowing you to play games that you otherwise couldn't. Even though the M1 is powerful enough to play a game like Portal, the fact that it's, oh my gosh, it's Scary Man. You guys can't see him because my capture card bugged out. It's Scary Head Man. Always terrified me as a child. Okay, we're in the game. Officially, we're running at not quite 1200p, so let me just switch that up. We're running at a high detail settings. That's not too bad. Let's just go ahead and load a game and see exactly how it is. Okay, around 60 to 100 FPS. Uh, there's a little frame stuttering. It's not awful. GLaDOS, shush. Uh, 80 FPS right here. This is not awful. I'm not okay. There was a huge frame hiccup there where it dropped to 27. Oh, looking at the portal with the particle effects, it's having a hard time. Remember that this is running a Windows emulation off of ARM on Mac OS. So we're not even like doing everything properly and yet we still have I would, I would consider this playable. Fun fact, the first time I ever played Portal, I didn't have speakers on my computer and I didn't have headphones. So I played the entire thing in silence and I thought it was just a neat little puzzle game and I had no idea that there were audio cues in the entire thing. So I honestly can play this game in a lot worse uh, settings. It does seem to be performing well enough that I would be considering this playable even if it's not great. I died. Great, good job, Brett. So 32-bit games can potentially work using crossover, which is a nice achievement to see. Previously, before I even started this video, I tried out Horizon Zero Dawn. As I mentioned, Red Dead Redemption 2 doesn't work and Resident Evil Village also would not work. So let's go ahead and try out R Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Oh, that's market improvement. We're getting into at least the booting screen. Will we actually get into the menu? There's audio. There are no visuals, however. Yeah, I'm gonna call this one a fail because it's also not working. Now, let's try The Witcher 3 see how it goes oh my the witcher is running we are in the menu we have 49 frames per second it seems like when i hit options the audio stayed but the game locked up and i can't do anything right now oh there we go it caught up so this menu is known for running at thousands of fps depending on what graphics card you have and we're currently only hitting 48 fps i'm not going to say that it's good just yet, but let's try 1920 by 1200. Let's do low. This is a pretty intensive game. Let's see what we can potentially get out of this system. Oh, we're in the game. We're sitting at 48 FPS. It feels like it's capped because that's what the menu is running at. That's weird. Is there like some sort of 
V-Sync on that I'm not aware of. No, V-Sync's turned off. So why is it kind of capped at 48 FPS? It's running. This looks adequate enough to me. This is 100% playable in my book. I wonder if I set it to high, are we still gonna be at 48 FPS? Because if you can increase the quality settings without having any sort of performance penalty, I'd be all down for that. Nope, that crashed the game. Okay, we're back in the game. I wonder if it stuck the settings. Nope, setting it to high crashes it, but it was running perfectly fine at low. That is weird. Okay, I'm gonna try one more time just to set it to medium. And maybe what's happening here is that I have to be in the menu to change the game visual settings and doing it on the fly is just too much for the game to handle. Because again, remember it's running in emulation mode. This is not meant to be done. Okay, medium worth. So maybe it's just high. Can I switch to ultra? Is that possible? I am gonna regret that. Okay, medium is where we're gonna stop. And I wanna see how I can play at medium. I'm gonna stop messing with it. You know what, Never mind. I changed my mind. I'm gonna try to set it to high in the game settings. That worked. Okay, we're at high now in the game settings. Will it load the game or will we have issues trying to get into the game on high? What is going on? Nope, can't run, doesn't work, no high. <laughs> the Witcher 3 cannot get high. Set it down to medium, stop trying to fart around. Medium's at 48 FPS, that's totally good, this looks fine. I originally played The Witcher 3 on a GTX 950 laptop, so I am 1000% okay with playing at 1200p medium and getting 50 FPS. Okay, there are some frame rate hiccups, especially as I get into combat here. A uh, little bit difficult with the particle effects, but still running smoothly enough. Again, as I mentioned, this is definitely way better than I initially played this game. But this is this is playable. I would totally enjoy this. Obviously, this is not the level of gaming performance that you would expect to get out of something like a $2,700 gaming laptop. But considering the fact that Apple is trying to change the industry by moving over to ARM, and this is putting a lot of pressure on Intel and AMD and NVIDIA, to potentially change how they're doing things. I'm heavily in favor of this. Obviously, I would love it if more games were playable and it wasn't just Portal and The Witcher 3 that I could get running on Wine and it wasn't just everything that's available on Mac OS right now. But hopefully, again, as Valve is trying to work out getting Linux gaming up and running, we might potentially see a lot more developments happen where there's better ARM support, there's better Mac OS support, and all of those things might progress down the line. I'm excited for the future of games. Obviously, we talked about in a previous video this week about how you can get NVIDIA's GeForce Now on the Xbox, which opens up PC games onto that platform. And I also have that same option with my MacBook. If I wanted to go to GeForce Now, I could play PC games on there with something like an RTX 3080 or whatever the Founders membership will get me. And then there's also xCloud as well as Google Stadia, where you do have gaming options on the MacBook where you're not running it natively. But these are the games that can actually play on the MacBook. There's not very many, but there are enough that I could consider myself having a good time. If I was just out at Starbucks and bored for a little bit, I could load up some Hades and enjoy that on Steam. But what do you think of the MacBook Pro's gaming performance? Let me know down in the comments. And if you want to check out that video that I mentioned where we tried GeForce Now on the new Xbox Series consoles, you can check that out and I'll see you in the next UFD Tech video, my friends. Cheers. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs>